The Batman Arkham series is one of the best gaming franchises in recent history. Releasing four games over a seven year span that helped to expand on the already great Batman mythos. While also giving fans a chance to actually become the hero themselves. These games have given us some of the best stories and iconic performances that have left many believing this was one of the best things DC has put out involving Batman in years. With several years passing since the release of what we thought was the last game in the series, fans hoped and speculated on what the studio, Rocksteady, who created the franchise, would do next. Could it be a prequel showing the events taking place after Arkham Origins? Or could it be a sequel showing us what happened to the Batman after the rather ambiguous ending of Arkham Knight? The answer, however, was not quite what fans were clamoring for, but instead something else entirely. Enter Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Lo and behold, the next game set in the Arkhamverse was not another Batman game, but instead one that focused on the Suicide Squad. While showcasing another set of characters in this universe isn't a bad idea on its face, what we got was definitely not what fans were wanting. Instead, we got canon-breaking, poorly designed and written characters and just outright disrespectful material. This game managed to disrespect not only the Arkhamverse that so many people have spent years exploring, pretty much all the members of the Justice League, as well as the late legendary Batman voice actor Kevin Conroy, who reprised his iconic role in one of his final performances before his death. The first problem with this game is that it throws the Arkham continuity down the drain. With the ending of Arkham Knight, Bruce Wayne is revealed as Batman and activates the Nightfall Protocol. He fakes his death, at least that is what everyone in the game assumes, and then leaves things ambiguous for players to come up to their own conclusions, or having options for a follow-up game should they so choose. However, in the Suicide Squad game, it is shown that Batman basically decides to forget everything that he did in the previous game and go back to being Batman in the public eye by joining the Justice League. After everything that happened in Arkham Knight, does this really seem like something Batman would do? The question is rhetorical, but I'll answer it anyway. No, he wouldn't. This most likely being the result of the writers wanting to have Batman appear in the game, but realizing that the previous games made this pretty much impossible, so they essentially just decided to retcon it. Another point of continuity error is the race swapping of Deadshot. Deadshot has appeared in two previous Arkham games and the movie Assault on Arkham, which also takes place in the Arkham universe. Although the writers of this game have most likely never even heard of this movie, considering they probably didn't even take the time to play the previous games from the look of things. There is a comment in the game about this, but it's never really clarified except that they most likely just wanted to have a black guy on the team in hopes of filling their diversity quota. For five years. Can we please? Oh, so sorry, Deadshot. Are we interrupting your being strapped to a gurney? Isn't Deadshot supposed to be white? Aren't you supposed to be shutting your damn mouth? Kangaroo looking ass. Because you are Australian. What they should have done is used a character like Bronze Tiger instead of Deadshot. This way, they could have had an already black character who has been part of the Suicide Squad in the past without having to change the game in the comic canon. This would have also given them a different character type for the game, as he is a brawler, fighter type character more in the vein of how Batman would fight. There are already two long range and equipment heavy characters with Captain Boomerang and Harley Quinn, so having Deadshot does not add much play type variety. Obviously Deadshot is more well known than a character like Bronze Tiger, which is a big reason why they chose to use him, but this would have solved a lot of their problems. Another side note, this is who Idris Elba should have played in the Suicide Squad movie, not Bloodsport. This would have been such a better fit and a perfect casting. But no, like here, they wanted another Deadshot ripoff. Next thing we get is our first introductions to the characters of the Justice League in the Arkhamverse. The first time we're ever seeing these characters outside of, say, Batman. Only for them to all be unceremoniously killed and humiliated. Now you might be asking, isn't that the title of the game? Didn't we expect this? And the answer is, I don't think I quite expected it like this, no. If it was just its own little game set off in some far DC universe, I don't think it would have been quite as bad, but since it was the Arkhamverse, it made it even worse. Since this is now, at least in the creator's minds, how the Arkham Batman dies. Although most fans, including myself, will not be counting this game as canon. Even setting what universe is in aside, 
the deaths were all very symbolic of how our heroes are treated in modern day media. With them implying the Flash gets urinated on, to the Batman getting beaten and shot point blank in the head by a character that he took out with one punch back in Arkham City. This all stems from a larger problem of modern media trying to tear down and destroy our heroes and icons. A way of getting rid of what they deem as the problematic old and replacing them with what they deem their acceptable new. This has been happening more and more in comic media over the last decade, and this was just yet another example of that. It was just a hugely disrespectful thing to do to some of the most iconic characters in pop culture history, let alone their own company. But this was what a lot of game boils down to. Disrespect. Disrespecting the characters, the history, the legacy, and of course, the fans. Finally, this game also features one of the last performances of the late actor Kevin Conroy. The man who is synonymous with the voice of Batman. A man many, including myself, consider to be the definitive Batman. After so many years of voicing Batman on the animated series, Kevin came back to play in the Arkham games, only missing the prequel game Arkham Origins. The fact that this is how they send off the greatest Batman actor of all time is, you guessed it, disrespectful. Granted, he did sign on for this project, although I'm not sure how much he actually knew about what was going to happen, but the fact that they picked this ending for Kevin Conroy and Arkham Batman is just even more evidence that these creators do not care about these characters and their legacy. This game has united fans, just not in the way everyone would have preferred. Overall, the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League has managed to take a dump on the legacy of the best games, characters, and animation that the DC Universe has to offer. With the way the Arkham series capped off, this would have been the perfect opportunity to introduce us to none other than Batman Arkham Beyond. Everything about how the previous game ended set up perfectly for this and would have been a great addition to the Arkhamverse. One that would have, assuming of course the right people were working on it, respected the material and given fans the sequel we actually deserved. The ending of Arkham Knight left us with the public assuming that Bruce Wayne and Batman were dead, leaving Gotham in need of a new protector. Now we do see something at the end of this game that refers to a new ghost Batman character taking the streets. Now this could most likely be Bruce taking on a new role as a full-time Batman now that the Batman we're used to is out of the picture, or potentially a new person donning the role in his stead. Either way, this could play perfectly well into Arkham Beyond's story. With Bruce Wayne out of the picture, this would have given Derek Powers, a very prominent character in the Batman Beyond universe, the opportunity to step in and take over Wayne Enterprises, leading to a Gotham that many of those who are familiar with the Batman Beyond show in comics would recognize. This also being how Terry gets into the picture, with his father working for Derek Powers. The game could then flow much like the series did in many aspects, with Terry's father being killed, which ultimately leads to Terry investigating his murder. While searching, he stumbles across none other than, you guessed it, Bruce Wayne, who turns out to be alive this whole time, living in seclusion since the death of Batman. Terry of course steals the bat suit, and Bruce ends up helping him as his Oracle type character. A very similar path to what many fans know, and one that fits perfectly to the ending of Arkham Knight. Looking to some other aspects of how the game would work, the overarching villain to the game would be none other than Derek Powers, showing his turn into Blight. The story would revolve around Terry trying to solve his father's murder and stumbling onto Powers' schemes at the same time, giving players the detective elements that were so present in the previous Arkham games. Being in the future will also give us the opportunity to use all of Batman's new gadgets in action, giving us stuff from previous incarnations like the Batarangs, and such, while also getting us to introduce new futuristic tech. Not to mention that Batman Beyond suit is capable of flight, which would introduce a whole new element into the game that we're not used to. The map of Neo Gotham would also be an interesting one to explore, with a new architecture and landscape of the future. This also potentially letting us explore the older parts of Gotham, maybe even incorporating parts of one of the older maps into a certain section of the game. Arkham Beyond would also give players a chance to face off against a new rogues gallery of Batman. Seeing the likes of Ink, Spellbinder, and Shriek in boss fights and side missions. 
even the opportunity to incorporate some of Batman's classic rogues as well. Characters like Ra's al Ghul, Mr. Freeze, and Bane all appeared in the Batman Beyond TV show, and they could do it in a similar way in the game to tie things to current day and the more recognizable Batman mythos. Of course, they would also probably find a way to bring in the Riddler as well to test this new Batman's intellect with trophies and challenges. And let's face it, what Batman game would be complete without the Riddler and his trophies? All this combining to give us a new Batman world and story to explore, one that pays homage to what came before it in a way that the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League just couldn't do. Finally, this game would have also given us a much better farewell to Kevin Conroy as Batman. With him getting to reprise his role as an older Bruce Wayne who mentors the young Terry McGinnis into the new Batman. Even bringing in more actors from the original TV show and games, like getting Will Friedel to come back and play the role of Batman Beyond once again, instead of wasting one of the iconic Batman voice actors' last performances on the garbage game that we actually got. All these things would have led to a sequel that fans actually deserved. After dedicating so much time into this universe over the years, a game that would truly respect what came before it and also keep things moving forward. Instead, we got a game tearing down our heroes and disrespecting every aspect of the once great franchise. Rocksteady and the creators of this game did this all with intentionality taking one of the most beloved universes and greatest characters and treating them like garbage. Even if they somehow retconned everything, all the deaths, and brought back all these characters, the damage is done. None of us can unsee what they have done to our heroes, and as far as I'm concerned, none of this is canon to the Arkhamverse. Unless they create a proper sequel, Arkham Knight will truly be the game that shows the day that Batman dies. This is how it happened. This is how the Batman died. Wow! Are we done with your bad stand-up routine? Almost. But you always gotta end on your best joke. I hope you choke on a mother cheese stick, you nasty, greasy bitch. You look like you drink white Gatorade and smell like nickels.